Welcome to the last video of the series. Here we are going to be applying both FIFO and average cost formulas under the periodic inventory system. So remember, under the periodic system, the allocation is made at the end of each period. Uh, it's the same steps if it was perpetual. Uh, and the only difference is you'd be doing it every flip in time. You make a sale or purchase. Actually, really just a sale. So yeah, let's take a peek at FIFO. We are going to be doing something that looks like a very messy version of this because I'll be walking you through an actual example with my less than lined up and perfect, but effectively we'll be doing the same thing. We're going to be figuring out what are the costs available for sale. Um, so what are the what's the inventory available for sale? In order to do that, we're going to start off with our beginning inventory units times unit cost, and we'll figure out all of our purchases for that period. It looks like it's a year, so that we get our total units available and our total cost. Then um, we're going to figure out, cool, when uh, did we make some, or pardon me, um, what were our total sales and what was the unit cost for those sales? Uh, we're going to determine our cost of goods sold and um, we are going to, interesting, um, we are going to um, figure out our cost of goods sold and um, then we are also going to figure out um, our ending inventory. Really interesting here. So I said interesting because I just took a peek and um, it's the same, same, but different. So if you want to, you can figure out your ending inventory. So here, um, this question would have said, hey, you have 450 units left. Cool, um, take 400, you add 50 up here. I tend to go sometimes the other way. And that is, I tend to say, okay, what was sold first? This, then this, then this, then this. Really, because your ending inventory plus your cost of goods sold equals your cost of goods available for sale, you can figure out either your ending inventory or cost of goods sold first. Really, whatever is easier to go backwards or forwards. I also call this the in equals out rule um, because if you think about it, your beginning inventory plus your purchases is always going to have to equal is always going to have to equal your cost of goods sold. I know, um, or sales. Um, I, I just call them cost of goods sold because sales makes it confusing. Um, plus your ending inventory because effectively this is another way of showing your inventory T account, right? So. If you look at our inventory T account, which I'm going to snag here, beginning, available for sale, 800, out, 800. So I call this like in minus out. Is this technically an out? I don't know. But this is definitely what we started the year with, and this is what we ended the year with. So that's, I guess you can call it beginning and ending. <laughs> that might be a better, or I don't know, um, during and after? Sure, whatever. Or I just summarize it, in equals out. All right, so let's go back. That was our FIFO. So FIFO, um, basically all of your this will look the same under FIFO as will look under average cost. But then it's determining what's left. So here we're like, cool, you have 450. Well, what you have left, you would have sold all of this and all but 50 of this. So 50 times 12 and then all of the 400 times 13. And that gives you what you're left with because you sold all of this. Okay, all of this. So if you went through and you went this times this, so 1,000 plus 2,200 plus 250 times 12, that would equal your cost of goods sold of 6,200 here. All right, let's take another peek. So again, you're gonna have 1,000 units at $12,000. 1,000 units, um, $12,000, heck, that's $12,000 divided by 1,000 equals $12. Um, that means if you have 450 or $12 per unit, therefore, if you have 450 units left at the end, 450 times 12 equals 5,400. 
And you could also do the same thing. So 550 times 12 equals um, $6,600 um, for your cost of goods sold. Um, 6,600 plus 5,400 equals your 12,000 available for sale. All right, and if you're like, oh my goodness, I love weighted average, yes. Yes, <laughs> I agree. All right, let's take a look at a question. So um, we are going to be applying both the FIFO and the average cost methods. For average costs, uh, use unrounded numbers. Have a peek through this, have a read, um, set up your spreadsheet, give this video a pause, and when you come back, I'll be walking you through how we got the answers and you can compare how you did. Talk soon. All right, let's see how you did. First, let us do the calculations for all the purchases. So first month of operations, meaning you do not have any beginning inventory. Fabulous. Uh, now you made three purchases and I'm just gonna separate this into units price per unit and then total cost cool all right so first number one we have 370 units and they were at nine dollars a unit and so our total cost for that first one was going to be three, 3,300. Okay. Love it. Let's do number two. How's everybody doing, by the way? You're doing well. This is um, going to be the longest stretch is the time between um, now and reading break. But here's the thing. The material is like such that we're doing like an account or two accounts every week. And I think it'll be a fun way to like get a little bit more depth versus now we're kind of filling in the framework that you built. So stick with it, eye on the prize. And I have no doubt that you can uh, hit your definition of success in this course. So small incremental work. All right, number two, 700 units at $12 each, and that's gonna be a total of 8,400. Number three, we got 800 units at $11. What are they selling? I wonder what they're selling. These baseball hats. All right, uh, 8,800. Physical inventory count was determined there was 600 units left at the end of the year. So our ending, uh, ending inventory, is equal to 600 units. Okay, cool. Assuming Queen's Land uses periodic inventory system, calculate the ending inventory and cost of goods sold using FIFO and average cost. Cool. So something I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it, build in a little check for myself and I would suggest you doing that for yourself for exams, uh, et cetera. And so we now know the, actually I'm gonna do it for both. We know that our total available for sale is going to be one thousand eight hundred and seventy units that are worth twenty thousand five hundred and thirty dollars. Cool. And at the end, I'll just move this over here. And at the end of the year, I have 600 units left. So I'm just gonna line up my like little units with my cost. And so what I'm being asked is what is my, um, what is my cost? So what's gonna show up? Cause I'm not gonna put 600 units. I'm not gonna put 1870 units in my financial statements. I'm gonna put the financial cost, not the units. Okay, so let's do this under the FIFO. See, under the FIFO, uh, what is the cost of my, so let's just make this a little bit more. A is gonna be FIFO, and I want to know what is my costs for ending inventory and costs for um, cost of goods sold. I know, I know. No, we're just gonna call it cost of goods sold. We can't do cost for cost, okay. So, and we'll do this again for our weighted average below. 
All right, so cost for ending inventory, 600. Oh my gosh, I love this. So we have 600 units. We have 800 units where the last one sold. So that means that all of these went out. Oh, um, so I love that. Like I, I absolutely love that because it means I get to be lazy. Because it means that all of these 600 units are gonna be at $11. And so that makes me really exciting because I know that they had to sell this before they sold this. And then they sold 200 units of the 800, which is why we have 600 units left. And so my cost of goods sold, and you know what, just, just to line up the costs with the units, we'll put them here. So cost for E or ending inventory, um, whatever. Okay, are gonna be our 6,600. And so we can then just say, cool, what's our available for sale costs less our ending inventory and we must have sold 13,930. If you're not quite sure how I got this 13,930, I recommend going back to learning objective number one's video uh, for chapter six and building your own T account. Feel free to post uh, down below or on the discussion board your T account. We can work through it there. Um, I, I say this with loving kindness. If you struggle a little bit doing anything throughout this course, think good. Because when we struggle, we release, um, you know, some, I believe it's like hormones or we release, we release some brain chemicals that um, help really sink in the learning. So if you get this stuff right away, you know, great means you'll probably get it again in the future. And if you struggle a little bit, um, great. It means that once you break through, um, especially maybe there's some frustration, it will be sunk in and then come your practice time, come your exam time, it will be there. Cool. All right, so under FIFO, our ending inventory was 6,600 and our cost of goods sold were 13,930. And let's do under <laughs> um, weighted average. Um, <laughs> and so we're gonna wanna do the same thing, except we have one calculation to do first, and that is what is our cost per unit, whether or not we're moving it or keeping it, moving it through cost of goods sold or keeping it in ending inventory. Total, take our total costs, divide by our total units, and we have a cost per unit of 10.98, cool. Well, we know that we have 600 units left in ending inventory times our 10.98. I guess we could even put that little cost per unit like right in there. Um, yeah, in our, I guess we can put our, we can be all fancy like that. Okay, cut, paste. Yeah, that's there. That can be our 600 here, sure. Okay, um, and so we can do the same thing. Uh, we can go up here, 20,530 minus our ending inventory equals our weighted average inventory of 13,943. Uh, some of you might ask, how many decimals do I need to use on um, your test? Well, if it's it's whatever the question says, it might say rounded to two decimals, it said might, it might say rounded to the nearest dollar. Either way, um, make sure that you round appropriately. All right, how did you do? People, uh, that's inventory. I'm pretty excited about next week um, because it is cash. And you know, cash is the lifeblood of business. Cash is what we use to buy inventory. Cash is what we earn when we sell inventory. Cash is things that we pay our employees with and cash is what we use to dividend out, um, you know, uh, excess uh, earnings that we wish to repay back our shareholders. Cash is what we use to pay debt. Cash is what we, gosh, cash is cash. And you know, it just looks fun. So have a great week and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much.